Welcome to this Locker Project film looking at the issues around silica dust. So let's start off with looking at what is silica. Silica is a natural substance which is found in rocks and sand and clay. So as a result it's also found in many common construction products such as bricks and concrete. When these materials are broken, cut, drilled or sanded, dust particles are going to be released. Some of these dust particles are so fine that if you breathe them in, they can travel deep into your lungs where they can end up damaging your health. This fine dust is commonly referred to as respirable crystalline silica or RCS for short. Although cutting without any form of dust control shouldn't happen anymore, it's sadly a practice that occurs on a daily basis. Just look at the picture on the right and look at the amount of dust that's created. This 15 second task was a set up to show the poor practice of cutting paving stones without any dust control in place. The amount of dust created just over a few seconds is shocking. Before we go to look at how much dust will be created if a task took 20 or 30 minutes longer, just remember that the operative did wear a full range of PPE and RPE to do this task. Well, let's have a look at the longer task. This clip shows just a few seconds of a task which took much longer to complete. Four vertical cuts were made through a single thickness brick wall to create openings for two new doors. An on two vacuum unit was used to help remove the dust from the work area but you'll be shocked at how much dust was collected. Yeah, look, shockingly, well over seven kilos of dust was collected from this single task. Wow. Sadly, around a thousand people in the UK needlessly die each year as a result of silica dust exposure. Many thousands more will be suffering from silica related illnesses. But why is silica so dangerous? Well, dust generally fall into one of three categories. The first category is nuisance dust. This is made up of particles which, although small, are of a size and weight where they normally just fall to the floor or onto the surrounding work surfaces without really going fully airborne. Then we have inhalable dusts. Inhalable dust is made up of tiny particles which are small enough to float around in the air. This means that they can be easily inhaled by anyone who's in the area. These tiny particles get caught in the nasal hairs or in the throat, but are usually removed by blowing your nose sneezing or coughing. The third type is respirable dust. This is made up of particles that are so small they bypass the natural protection in the nose and throat and can travel deep into your lungs where they settle and remain. Silica dust falls into this category. Breathing in respirable dust like, like silica can result in a range of serious respiratory conditions developing. These can include things like asthma, COPD, lung cancer, lung diseases, silicosis, and it's also worth remembering that asbestos fibres are respirable and cause similar serious health conditions. Sit up and don't slap. Head up, shoulders back. Okay, and you can sit down. So what we need to do is pinch your nose. Remember I said about a restriction in your airways for COPD. Put the straw in your mouth and breathe only through the straw. And keep that going. Keep your nose pinched. Just keep your lips tight around the straw and only your intake is through that straw. It becomes limited, your air, your supply, you'll start to try and get more oxygen. And if you suffer with COPD, this is what it's gonna feel like, okay? And when you say that straw, it's almost, so, <clears throat> why not try taking a deep breath through a straw and you'll get an idea of the struggle of sufferers from a disease such as COPD face every day. But please remember, don't try this if you've got an existing medical condition that could be aggravated. Unlike cuts and other physical injuries, which you can see immediately, work-related illnesses by exposure to construction dust can take years and years to appear. How much dust is too much? Well, the HSC publishes a list of workplace exposure limits. WELs for short, for hazardous substances in their publication H 40 Many of the workplace exposure limits listed show values which are based on an 8 hour period. An 8 hour period is usually a daily shift time. These values are limits, not targets. Remember that exposure to dust at levels below the those listed could still have an effect on your health. Workplace exposure limits differ for different dusts. In general, Inhalable dust have a workplace exposure limit of 10 milligrams per cubic meter of breath. General respirable dusts, 4 milligrams 
take through this nuclear breath. Silica dust, however, has a respirable particle size and has a workplace exposure value of only 0.1 per cubic metre of breath. Silica dust is seen to be so harmful that the workplace exposure limit is only a fraction of the limit for other dusts. But how much air do we breathe in? Well, it's different for every individual and will also change and depend upon the type of work that's being undertaken. When a person carries out a physically demanding task, their breathing rate increases. The breathing rate will then slow down during periods where less demanding activities are undertaken. Using the calculation below, if an individual inhales half a litre of air per breath, averages 12 breaths a minute, then 2,880 litres of air is inhaled over a typical eight hour work shift. This equates to 2.88 metres, cubic metres, sorry, of breath during the eight hour period. Have a look at the calculation, work it out yourself. But remember, this is only an example and each individual's results will be totally different. So, we saw before that many respirable dusts have a workplace exposure limit of four milligrams per cubic metre. If we take the four milligrams, we multiply by the 2.8, the cubic metres, we get 11.52 milligrams of dust over an eight hour period. This image shows 11.5 milligrams of dust on top of a one pence piece. If you have a look, it really doesn't take too much dust to exceed the workplace exposure limit. But then when we look at silica dust, silica has a much lower workplace exposure limit of only 0.1 milligrams per cubic metre. So over eight hours, this is around 0.28 milligrams, or around the 40th of the total dust on the penny. Just think about this. Without any controls or without any protection in place, you could easily inhale that amount of dust just by taking one deep breath. To confirm the levels of dust in your workplace, you need to carry out an air monitoring exercise on your activities. This must include personal monitoring of your operatives. The monitoring samples should be taken within the breathing zone for the operative, which is around the upper, upper chest and shoulders. The results of these exercises will have to identify if you need to take steps to reduce dust levels. Regardless, risk assessments must be completed for all your work activities. A risk assessment will allow you to identify the hazards within your activities, introduce controls, and these controls can help to reduce the risk of harm occurring. You need to follow the five steps to risk assessment. Step one, identify the hazards. Step two, <clears throat> decide who may be harmed and how. Step three, evaluate the level of risk and decide on the controls that you need to put in place to minimise the risk. Step four, Record your findings and then implement what you've decided. Step five, review your assessment and update as necessary. As part of your risk assessment, you should work through the hierarchy of control from the top and where you can eliminate any hazards at source. Where you can't eliminate them and that's not possible. Work down through the steps until you identify an appropriate practical solution and implement the controls that you identify. As you can see, personal protective equipment or PPE is listed as the final option in the hierarchy. It should only be used as the control, sole control measure as a last resort and if the works must take place and there's no other controls available. PP can be used as a backup for other control measures. So let's just have a look at these examples and how we can reduce dust, uh, silica dust exposure. Elimination. Can we carry out the task without the need for cutting bricks? Substitution. Can we use an alternative safer material? Engineering controls. Can we use extraction or water suppression to reduce the dust? Administrative procedures. Can we reduce the time or the number of people uh, who may be affected? And then you've got PPE. Don't forget, it's a final choice or as a backup for the controls above. If a face mask or respirator is used as a control measure of hazardous dusts, it must, and I repeat it must, be the right type for the dust it must be face fit tested for the wearer before any work begins and it must be used, stored and disposed of correctly. So your risk assessments, your communication, your equipment and working methods, the information instruction and training that you give to your staff, all of these feed into safe systems of work, which if they're followed and complied with, will reduce the risk of accidents, incidents and exposures occurring. For the cutting task which we've shown earlier, 
uh, we couldn't eliminate them or substitute them uh, the way the task was completed. So we introduced engineering controls. So when the engineering controls were used in the form of a vacuum unit to control the dust. Look at the difference in the amount of dust that was produced. So on the left here, we've got <coughs> the action that took place earlier on. No dust control in place, full PPE and RPE. Look at the amount of dust. On the right, we've got exactly the same person, the same machine, the same block, the same task. The extraction was on. Look at the level of dust. The dust is just dramatically reduced. So the question is, do you really want to risk your health? Do you want to have that barbed wire feeling around your lungs? I don't think you do. Um, this presentation is intended as a basic guide and we hope you found it of use. Also, check out the IOSH No Time to Lose campaign for lots more useful information. But if you need more specific advice, please be seek this out from a specialist. We must say a special thank you to Steve Hughes Joinery and Building Limited for the help producing the clips for this film. Mark Curry from Ground Control UK for the COPD demonstration. To Louise and the team at IOS Chilton for the support for Locker Project. And also a thank you to Pete Gregory and Martin Jones who helped with feedback to get this final version ready. If you want to know more, search hashtag Locker Project on any social media stream for more information. And thank you for watching.